Hello and welcome to this Exposure Events instructional video. In this video, we'll be setting up an event, scheduling it, and publishing it. We'll be working in the Exposure Basketball site, but all the other sports sites are pretty much the same process. Let's get started. I'm going to log into my director account. Once I log in, I'll see a very consistent look. I'll see table views like this. This is my upcoming events. I'm going to click the Add Event button on the top right. All add buttons will always be top right. I'm going to go ahead and fill out uh, my information about my event. I'm going to go ahead and hit save now. This event is now in our directory. The next steps I'm going to take for actual scheduling purposes. Let's go to divisions. I'm going to add a division. I'm going to go ahead and type in 17U. I'm going to hit the plus button at the bottom instead of save. The plus button will save it, but keep me on the add page. Because I want to add another division real quick. I'm going to go ahead and click divisions in my breadcrumb. You'll see me click link, uh, these links quite a bit. It's a nice way to navigate throughout your event when you're setting it up. And I can see my two divisions. I'm going to add some teams now. I'll just click on the zeros here on the 16U and hit add team. And add three teams here. And if you are importing stuff in, you can import the divisions in, the teams in, the pools in, and schedule requests if you really wanted to. There's my three teams. I'm going to go ahead and click on the 16U in my breadcrumb to get back to my division details and go to my pools. I'm still under my 16s. Add a pool. Now I know I have three teams in here. If I knew I was going to get three more teams, I could do six divided by three. It's going to give me two pools, but I don't need this guy, so I'm just going to delete it. And I'll start dragging the uh, participants into the pool slots. Now if you don't care where they go, there's a sort button at the bottom that will put them in there automatically. Let's go to our brackets now. You can have as many brackets as you want. Default name is always championship. I'm going to skip to the participants section here. Uh, if you're going to choose number of participants, this is straight bracket play. Once the bracket's created, you can put the teams in the bracket. Division standings, it takes everyone in the division. It doesn't matter what pool they're in and actually ranks them in the bracket. C standings is for more complex scenarios. Let's say you have a uh, three pools of three, and you want the first place teams to play in a bracket. Well, who gets to buy those first place teams? You can say the first of the first seeds, basically the best team between those three seeds, and the other two teams will play that first round game. And then the most common is first of A, first in B, uh, etc. I can see my template down here already for my single elimination. I can deselect which seeds go in this bracket, and it will actually update that template. I'm going to keep everyone selected, though. And you can check out the templates we already have here. Uh, if you have your own custom brackets, you could actually uh, create those and then copy those to future divisions if you wanted to. Now, most of the time, the bracket uh, will be just fine. But if you wanted to go in here and modify things, you can move things around. You can edit uh, participants in the bracket already. You can add games down here. You can add a note, uh, an image, uh, add anything you want. And again, you could set up your own uh, custom brackets and copy those to future divisions. Let's go to our 17s now. We'll add one team into here. And we're going to pretend we're going to get two more teams. I'm going to make some calls here. Now, this will be straight pool play. We won't do any bracket play in this one. And we're going to try to fill these slots in um, later on. All right. Let's go ahead and add some schedule requests before we start scheduling. I'm going to go to my event teams. You can notice I'm still under my event here. This is all the teams in my event. I'm going to go to restrictions in the side menu. Now these are the restrictions we offer. We offer a team restriction. That's uh, basically two teams that can't play at the same time. I'm going to say team one and the 16 and 17 are the same club. They have the same coach. I'm going to add that in there. Match restriction. That means they can play at the same time. You just don't want them to play against each other. Date time restriction is anything dealing with a date time. So I'm going to say um, don't schedule uh, the team one 16 before one o'clock. Venue restriction. Anything dealing with a uh, uh, venue location. Uh, I don't have any venues added yet, but you could say I want these, these these teams to play at this specific location, this minimum or maximum amount of games. Uh, games restriction. Maybe one team's going to play one more game than everyone else, and you don't want to forget about it. Make sure you put that restriction in, and the schedule grid will let you know. And then exhibitions for more complex scenarios. If you want a team to always be last in their standings, make them an exhibition team, even though they might have the best record. That way they never go to maybe the bracket on Sunday. All right, let's go ahead and schedule this guy. But before I do that, I'm going to go to my global venues for my dashboard. And a nice way to get to your dashboard quickly is to click the house. 
I'm going to open that up. I'm not going to add a venue, but I'll go into one. I'll go into Ballard High School. And you notice it's a name, abbreviation, address, coordinates. If I go to courts, here's my courts. I can add custom court names if I wanted to. And let's go back to my event now. And I'm going to go to schedule now. Now these are my event venues, and I choose from my global list. Some events might use different venues. So I'm going to choose which uh, venues this event's going to use, and I'm going to choose Ballard High School. I'm going to keep it simple with the 60-minute time increment. 8 a.m. start game time and 6 p.m. last game time. I'm going to go ahead and add that in. Now, if you need to fine-tune the courts, you can. You could say, you know, court ones are actually be 50 minutes or they're going to start at 9 a.m. I'm going to keep everything uniform, though, and go to dates at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and add my dates in. Now, sometimes if you uh, have uh, Friday games, uh, you usually have a maximum game of zero or one games. You could put that on there just to validate when you're uh, scheduling so uh, you could put that in there for maybe a Friday uh, I don't have a Friday um, Saturday and Sunday are my two days go to settings now let's go uh, 60 minute game rest between uh, games we we'll do a maximum games per day of two and you could check out these other settings uh, there are uh, more information um, help boxes that will appear if you want to click on them to read more on what they do go ahead and create my grid now what we recommend uh, is setting up the grid exactly the way you want. I'm going to go to full screen mode at the bottom. And I can double click spots to block off times. That means games can't be scheduled there. I can delete times. I can edit times. I can come down to the bottom here. Add a date. Add a time. Just set it up exactly the way you want. And then we can concentrate on our matchups down here. If you notice, there's no pool games yet. But there's those two uh, bracket games we created. Game 1, Round 1. Game 2, Round 2. Uh, let's go ahead and create our games at the bottom. Plus game. Now, if you have a different number of games per division, you might have to do this per division. I know I have a pool of three in each of them. I want to do a full round robin. So I can either put two in here explicitly, or I can leave it blank. Leaving it blank will say, uh, I don't care about the uh, size of the pool. I want them to do a full round robin. So if I had a five-team pool, uh, everyone's going to get four games per participant. If I had a three-team pool, everyone's going to get two games. Or I can override that, say maybe that five-team pool is actually going to do two games. Now, those three team pools will give me that full round robin with three games in it. If I hover over it, you can see the restrictions, the matchup, and there's also an R uh, to uh, buy a team that has a scheduling request. Uh, if I want to see the team names, I could click the Show Participants button at the bottom and just do it that way. I'm going to keep it in the minimized view for now. Now, how do we get these games in the grid? Now, you can auto schedule. Now, if you have a lot of rules, a lot of schedule requests, you might want to do this division by division. I don't have a lot of uh, those rules or games, so I'm going to just I'll just schedule everything at once, and it'll take into account our schedule requests, our rules down here, which you can edit um, uh, that uh, automatically. And I'm going to unschedule though, and I can unschedule per date, per division, pool play, bracket play. Uh, I'm going to unschedule everything. Now I'm going to start dragging these games up. I personally like the full control of the drag and drop when I schedule, but it was also showcase the validation. So you can see here, remember a1 and 16 could only play before one o'clock. So if I drop that game in a bad spot, there's going to be a red dotted line around it. And also the time will turn red. So I can fix that pretty quickly. If I start dragging up this round two game, you notice this game's turning white because A1's actually playing in that game that we're dragging. Um, now, if I did a back-to-back -back, uh, on purpose, it's not going to warn me because I maybe did it on purpose. Uh, but if I didn't, always hit the validate button at the bottom. The validate button will validate all your rules, even the ones that aren't real time, and tell you what's going on. Now, if I did this on purpose, I know in baseball they do it uh, back to backs. I know in um, basketball now with the COVID, sometimes they do back to backs. Just ignore the rule. But if you didn't, we can fix that pretty quickly. And we can hit validate, and all our rules are ready, good to go. So we'll schedule the rest of this division. I'll start dragging up the 17s division. If you notice, uh, A1 in the 16s and 17s are the same club, same coach. That's why these spots are turning white and red. If I drop the game uh, right there, there's going to be a red dot line around both of them, and I can fix that pretty quickly. We also validate bracket before pool. Um, if we do a round two game before round one in bracket, we validate that. If you need to update a matchup on the fly, just double click it, and you can change the matchup there. You can also uncheck uh, this uh, the standings. Uh, this game won't count against this team's standings. But it will count against this team's stand. The base is an exhibition game for this team, but not this team. And you can also delete the game from here, too. Last, you can come over to the um, uh, legend over here. And I can type in Team 1 and actually just see all Team 1's games. Maybe it's a club. I just want to make sure they're all in the same court. I could do that. Uh, I could click the down button on this drop down, just go through all the participants in my event visually. Or I could just click on the divisions down here and hit 16U. 
I can do the pool, the bracket, just visually see where everything's at from a division standpoint. This is pretty much how we do scheduling uh, all on one screen. So let's go ahead and publish this guy yet now. Now before we do that, after I hit save, always check out the summary page. Open up in a new link. It'll give you all the stats on your schedule. You can see opponent distribution, date distribution, time distribution, location distribution, home away distribution, who's scheduled for pool play, who's scheduled for bracket play. So let's come here. You might catch something that you didn't catch when you were scheduling. Also, if you go to venues, I can actually add a venue from here. If I forgot to add a venue uh, before I created my grid, I can do it from the event venue screen. Uh, be warned, after you do this, the spots will be gray in the grid, so make sure you double-click them um, when you go back to your grid to get those enabled. Uh, the right way to do it is to have the courts before you create the grid. Now, let's go ahead and publish this guy. I'm going to go back to my event details. And once you schedule at least one event, this quick publish menu will pop up. You notice uh, here that we have four credits that we need to apply. If I go to my account page, you can see I have 7,000 team credits. If I didn't have any credits, and the credit is just a team, there would be a buy button here. It will redirect you to the credits page. You purchase your credits. You redirect it back, and you get this message. There are currently four active teams without credits. Would you like to apply them now? Okay. Now those teams have credits applied to them. Uh, if they didn't, they would be invisible in the schedule. I can go ahead and publish my schedule, my bracket, and my standings. And it's telling me to set my tiebreaker rule, so make sure you set your tiebreaker rule before the event starts. I'm going to go ahead and just set um, a certain tiebreaker rule here and check out all the settings we have for a tiebreaker. And let's go see what this looks like from the public side. Now, before I do that, go back to your schedule. And let's make a change after we published it. If I hit save, you notice that this button turns green down here. Send revision alerts. If I open that up, it will have all the teams that have been modified uh, before or after the schedule has been published. So if you wanted to send a schedule revision email to everyone who's following this team or all the coaches that are attached to it, you can. They'll get a bulleted list of their brand new schedule. Uh, that way you target only the teams that um, were modified in the grid and not everyone. I'm going to show you the event website and then I'll show you the widget here in a bit. Now the event website is used for users that don't have a website. Maybe they don't like the way the website looks. Or it's just the easiest thing to do. You copy this link, put it in your site, and say, hey guys, here's the schedule. If you notice here, there's two app buttons. These are our default uh, app buttons. Uh, we do have branded apps. Um, if you did have a branded app, your branded app would actually show up under those icons. If I come down to the bottom here, there is a team search. So I can actually go to the teams page and see the schedule and follow that team. And I can go to 16U and just go straight to the standings, the schedule, and the bracket. Uh, if I want to click the print button, I can click, click at 8.5 by 11 PDF of my schedule. And these are the standings, the pool play, and our brackets. All our brackets fit to one page. It, it will actually rotate landscape or portrait. It won't uh, crisscross pages when you print them off. And you can actually blow them up. They won't lose any quality because they are vector-based. I can change my divisions right here automatically. And here's my um, standings and my schedule. There was no bracket play in this event or this uh, division. If I go to widgets on the event, if you want the schedule to be on your site, you can copy this code, put it on your site. We have a lot of widgets to choose from, but schedule is the one you most likely will use from this uh, demo standpoint. If I hit the preview button, you'll notice it's the same look and feel that you just saw. Uh, the only difference is uh, there's no container. It auto resizes. It's mobile friendly. Uh, there's no ads. And if you really wanted to, you could style it with a style sheet, a CSS style sheet. If you didn't like the orange... Um, uh, hyperlinks or the font uh, doesn't match your site, you can actually change that with your own style sheet. Now, most users will use the app at the event, and I can actually share my screen here uh, from my phone with this nifty little program. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. All right, I'm going to bring it over. Now, this is my, my actual phone, and you can see there's some branded apps here. Um, if I go to, say, um, you know, this is Triple Crown Baseball. This is their uh, app. Uh, they are multi-sport and you can go through there. It's their logos, their colors, and just their events. The one we just had is under our default app, so let's go ahead and go into it. And if you notice, we are all multi-sport in this one too, so I can click on basketball and you can do a search for that event. And the initial view on an event is the schedule view. Now, if I click on schedule, I can click on a date, go right into the game, and I can get directions and add the calendar. Now if I hit the back button, you notice there's an add-on by default on the default app. 
Now, it's off by default on the branded app, but you can actually put your own banners at the bottom. We integrate with Google AdMob, so you can click Analytics and click Race. So if you want to put sponsors or upcoming events or anything like that, you can. We have an article on how to do that. If I go to Divisions, I uh, click on 16U. I can click on Teams and see all the teams at Division. I can click on Standings. Uh, and these are real-time standings. Once you put scores in, you'll know who's in first place, second place, third place. And once uh, standings are done, we push them through the bracket automatically. Um, if there is a tie, uh, we will email you uh, with the uh, a, a tie alert. And you just go in there and manually update the seeds if you needed to. And the brackets, of course, propagate automatically. If I go to Teams, uh, if I had a lot of teams, it would be a search box, but I don't. Let's go click on Team 1. I can see the standings, the schedule, and I can also follow this team. I can say, you know, I'm a, I'm a parent. I want to put my phone number in my email. And what will happen is I'll get the final result via push, text, and email uh, automatically. And I will also get where I play next via push, text, and email. And all the users that are, are uh, following or favoriting this event are uh, on the exposure back end. You can uh, export them out and view those. Uh, but you can also send messages to those users now. If I go to venues, I can click on uh, my venue and I can see the schedule per court. And I can also get directions to that venue. If I hit the more button, I can manage my notifications. Uh, I can see who I'm following. I can upload a rules document from Exposure, and it would actually show up under documents right there. Messages, if I did send out a message, it would live under messages. Contact, you know, anything dealing with a, uh, your name, your email. If you did put your phone number, it would show up there. And if you put your Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, your website, it would show up there. The only thing about us on the branded app is the About app. It's just a support page with an email. All right, let's look at reporting real fast. We have a lot of reports to choose from. Uh, some you might use internally, some you might turn on for the public. Uh, example would be uh, if I went to the schedule grid uh, details of it, I can filter by date, date range, but you'll get the idea when I show you the preview. Uh, you could control the number of columns, but this is a small grid since it's a small event. If uh, there's another popular one, is just the uh, the running schedule, so I could just do the uh, default print view of this. And these are real time reports. Once you put scores in, you'll see the score show up when you reload this report. If I go to scores, uh, if you're updating scores from a laptop or desktop, this is probably the best view to do it. I can click on the plus button over here and actually just put the scores in. Um, I can post this to my Twitter or Facebook wall if I hook those up under my event uh, settings notification section. Um, and if I wanted to upload uh, maybe a score sheet or something, I can do this. And I can do it right through my phone. I can take a picture of it and update it uh, right through my phone. Uh, you can also filter by date or date range or export uh, certain uh, files here. We have an uh, ex uh, Excel export of your grid, which would just be an empty grid, one with division names, one that's condensed, and one that's full. And also with some sports, uh, we do have score sheets. With basketball, we have pre-populated score sheets with game information, rosters, and uh, team information. So you could just uh, get that PDF, take it to Kinko's or your printer, and just uh, print them off and uh, you know have them on the uh, score table ready to go. Now, if you're going to update scores from a mobile device, uh, always create a scorekeeper account from users. Uh, I'm not going to create one, but I'll go into one. It's just a username and password. Uh, you attach them to the organization or the event, and they log in, and they see a mobile friendly view of your schedule and they just update games just like I showed you with the same modal pop-up uh, they don't see your grid registration or anything like that um, let's go to messaging real fast now there's a lot of messages you can send out I can send out an a miss event message so I can target everyone or just coaches and I can target that event and I can send a push text or email uh, if you're using this a lot, maybe don't send uh, out text messages all the time. Maybe just do with the email or push notification. Uh, but I can put an expiration uh, on that uh, message. I can post it to Twitter or Facebook if I hook those up. I can put a title, text, and even an attachment. I can target uh, uh, past divisions maybe with a divisions message, saying I'm looking for a 16U team and do a filter on that. I can uh, do a teams message on a certain event. I could do a season message. Maybe I want to target a past season and tell them about the upcoming season. And if I did have a branded app, uh, there would actually be an app message button. And that's just a straight push notification. Um, that's pretty much it with the scheduling. Uh, once you go through the site, you're going to see a lot more settings you'll find. But those are pretty much the main settings that our system offers. Um, if you have any questions, you can ping us on bottom right on chat. Uh, but that's it for this uh, Exposure Events instructional video. Thanks for watching.